Hi, my name is Anna Maria Perry, and I'm a hematopathologist at the University of Michigan. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about Castleman disease from the pathologist's perspective. Castleman disease is a lymphoproliferative disorder that primarily involves lymph nodes. Clinically, two variants are recognized, unicentric and multicentric. In unicentric variant, single lymph node or a lymph node group at the same anatomic site is involved, while in multicentric variant, multiple lymph node groups are involved. Histologic classification of Castleman disease is a little bit different. Unicentric Castleman disease is most commonly of hyaline vascular variant and occasionally of plasma cell variant. Multicentric Castleman disease can be HH38 positive or HH38 negative, which is also called idiopathic. HH38 positive Castleman disease has a histology of plasma cell variant, but we can demonstrate also HH38. HH38 negative or idiopathic Castleman disease has a histology of plasma cell variant. When we talk about unicentric Castleman disease, most cases, 50 to 80 percent, depending on the literature, are of hyaline vascular variant, while the rest are the plasma cell variant. Since plasma cell variant, Castleman disease is uh, unicentric or multicentric, when we as pathologists make, make this diagnosis, clinical team has to exclude multicentric Castleman disease. Clinically, Hyaline vascular variant occurs over a broad age range from childhood to old age, but is most commonly seen in people in four decades. It has similar incidence among males and females. Lymph nodes are most commonly involved. Typical site is mediastinum. However, occasionally we see involvement of spleen or soft tissue. Plasma cell variant Patients are on average older than uh, patients with hyaline vascular variant of Castleman disease, and any lymph node group can be involved. Also has similar incidence in males and females. Multicentric Castleman disease occurs over a broad age range. Patients present with lymphadenopathy, typically of multiple sites but also other signs and symptoms, including hepatosplenomegaly, edema, effusions in body cavities, skin changes, neurologic changes, and different lab abnormalities. Patients with HHV8-positive Castleman disease can be HIV-positive or HIV-negative. Idiopathic Castleman disease, which is uh, less common than the hhv 8 associated one is not a diagnosis that a pathologist can make because it requires uh, that the clinical criteria are fulfilled. So what diagnosis do we make as pathologists? What are you going to see in our reports? So we are either going to call Castleman disease a highly vascular variant, a plasma cell variant, or we can diagnose CD, Castleman disease multicentric HH3 positive. In the next slides, I'm going to go over histology of different histologic variants of Castleman disease, starting with hyaline vascular variant of Castleman disease. This is a low power view of a lymph node involved by a hyaline vascular variant of Castleman disease. Lymph node has overall preserved but distorted architecture. What's immediately noticeable is that you have increased in follicles. These are the follicles, which vary in size, and many are small. Sinuses, which are typically open, and you'll see that in uh, later slides, what an open sinus looks like, are typically obliterated here, or largely obliterated. This is a medium power view of the same lymph node, and it shows mostly follicles, which, as I said, are increased in number. Follicles can be round or irregular, 
germinal centers, which are in the center of the follicles, are depleted of small lymphocytes and instead have increased follicular dendritic cells. Mantle zones, which surround the germinal centers, and I'm pointing to it, are showing so-called onion skin pattern. Why onion skin? Because you have concentric rings of small lymphocytes, which are reminiscent of an onion when you cut it in half. There are some other histologic changes which are helpful in diagnosing Castleman disease. One of those are lollipop lesions, which is basically a sclerotic blood vessel that radially penetrates germinal center. It's reminiscent of a lollipop, as seen here, therefore a lollipop lesion. Also, in some cases you can see hyaline deposits, hyaline as in pink uh, material, seen here. And um, this is one of the other features of Castleman disease. And then something that is also pretty characteristic is twinning, which is two or more germinal centers found in one follicle. Here we have two. Here we have multiple germinal centers, which are kind of like conglomerated. Typically, you only have one in a normal lymph node. But not only follicles show changes. Prominent changes are also seen in the interfollicular region, so the region in between the follicles. And the most conspicuous is the uh, marked increased in vascularity, as seen here and here. And the vessels that proliferate are called high endothelial venules. And also an important pertinent negative is that the sheets of plasma cells that are typically seen in plasma cell variant of Castleman disease are absent in highly vascular variant. Some cases also show sclerotic bands as demonstrated here. These pink structures are sclerotic bands. This is a higher power of sclerotic band. In some cases we'll also have thick capsule. And also an interesting finding, peculiar histologic finding, which is seen in Castleman disease is a, those are clusters of plasma cytodendritic cell which have a starry sky appearance because they have these interspersed paler cells. Therefore, uh, that gives it a starry sky appearance. And if you really want to demonstrate plasma cytodendritic cell, you can stain with CD123 and you can see that they are not only found in clusters, but also interspersed in the interfollicular area and definitely increased. Moving on to plasma cell variant of Castleman disease. This is a low power view of a lymph node involved by a plasma cell variant of Castleman disease. Lymph node shows preserved architecture and in contrast with hyaline vascular variant, sinuses are open. These elongated uh, paler structures are sinuses and they can even be occasionally distended. Lymph node follicles are increased but here you can nicely see germinal centers in most follicles. Having said that, subset of cases can have some hyaline vascular features, but they are less developed than in the hyaline vascular variant. And most importantly, in diagnostical, what's diagnostically important in this uh, variant is that you have sheets of interfollicular plasma cells. This, they kind of uh, have this purplish hue when you look at them on a low power. Higher power showing plasma cells, again. And then uh, a very high power showing um, sheets of plasma cells that appear mature. If you want to demonstrate plasma cells, you can do immunohistochemical stain for CD138, as shown here, which will highlight this confluent sheets of interfollicular plasma cell in a plasma cell variant of Castleman disease. There are some cases that show mixed features of both so hyaline vascular and plasma cell variant of Castleman disease. Today, these cases are considered as a spectrum of plasma cell variant. And I'm going to show one of these cases in the next uh, slides. So this is a low power view of a lymph node that uh, shows increased follicles and most of them show twinning, so two or more germinal center within the follicle. And then in between, there are large sheets of this kind of purplish staining cells, which are plasma cells.
this is a medium power view showing prominent follicular twinning or germinal center twinning actually and then this is a, a image that shows uh, highly highly germinal centers with twinning and then sheets of plasma cells another picture with sheets of plasma cells and follicle twinning and then if you want to demonstrate plasma cell you can do kappa light chain and lambda light chain immunostains which shows that plasma cells are polytypic Moving on to a case of multicentric HHVA positive Castleman disease. This is a very low power view or a whole mound basically of a lymph node involved by HHVA positive multicentric Castleman disease. In general, these cases have features, histologic features of plasma cell variant with overall preserved architecture with increased follicles, as seen here. So this is a medium power view of the same lymph node, which shows increased follicles. It demonstrates sinuses, these elongated pale structures, which are open. And in the interfollicular areas, there is vascular proliferation. One little histologic uh, clue that can be seen in these variants are blurred boundaries between mantle zones and interfollicular areas and what does that mean mantle zone is seen surrounding the germinal center but here in this follicle and pretty much all of the follicles it is really unclear at least on this part where the mantle zone stops and the interfollicular area starts so that means there's a blurred boundary between mantle zone and the interfollicular area this is a high power showing a follicle and sheets of interfollicular plasma cells. In all of these cases, we do uh, an HH38 stain. Generally, in all cases of plasma cell variant of Castleman disease, one should do an HH38 immunohistochemical stain. And in cases that are positive, we will see these uh, positive cells mostly in the mantle zone distribution like seen in these three follicles, but also scattered in the interfollicular areas. This is a high, very high power view of a follicle with a mantle zone to demonstrate the cells that are staining for HHV8. These cells are larger, they're shown here and here and here, and they have features of plasma blasts or immunoblasts. What, is that, what does that mean? As I said, these are larger cells. They have run nuclei, open chromatin, and usually one central nucleolus. These are the cells that are going to be staining. So we call them plasmoblasts usually. These cells have characteristic immunohistochemical profile. In addition to being positive for HHV8, they are also positive for IgM uh, heavy chain, and they are lambda light chain restricted when we do uh, either in situ hybridization or immunohistochemical staining for kappa and lambda. So as I said, they're HHV positive, IgM positive, lambda positive, and kappa positive, as seen in this case. When we do CD138, we can demonstrate the interfollicular sheets of plasma cells. This is a bit of a higher power showing those same plasma cells which are polytypic by kappa and lambda. So the interfollicular plasma cells are polytypic, while the plasma blasts that are HHV positive are lambda light chain restricted.
a few notes about idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease and uh, how it relates to histology. So idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease can be seen sort of standalone on its own, and um, those cases we call non type or it can be seen in the context of two syndromes. One is a TAFRA and the other one is a POEMS. These acronyms are explained here on the right side. So TAFRA stands for thrombocytopenia, anasarca, fibrosis of the bone marrow, renal dysfunction, and organomegaly, while POEM stands for polyneuropathy, organomegaly, endocrinopathy, slash edema, monoclonal protein, and skin changes. These are rare syndromes, but occasionally in our pathology practice, we can see a biopsy from a patient with one of these syndromes or a suspicion uh, of uh, these syndromes. So in an idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease of non tafra type, we have a, typically a plasma cell variant a histology. However, compared to HHV-8 positive cases, mantle zones are usually sharply defined from the interfollicular areas. In TAFRA patients, we have more of a mixed feature, so there's a plasma cell variant with a mixed highly vascular features. And then the POEM syndrome, we also have a plasma cell variant, but we can also see occasional hyaline follicles. In conclusion, we as pathologists diagnose histologic variants of Castleman disease, not clinical variants. Hyaline vascular variant, which is the most common variant in our uh, practice, is typically unicentric. However, plasma cell variant can be unicentric or multicentric, and we basically call it plasma cell variant, and it's up to clinical team to further diagnose the patient with appropriate clinical variant. We can, however, reliably diagnose HHV-8 positive multicentric Castleman disease since we have a good immunohistochemical stain that will demonstrate HHV-8 positive cells. Diagnosis of idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease is complex and requires correlation with clinical, laboratory, and radiologic findings. Thank you very much.